For Radio Cayman News, I'm Felicia rankin Solins. The health minister kicks off her contribution to the budget debate with the new COVID-19 variant, Omicron. We are now bracing to face a new variant to contend with and prepare for yet again. In speaking with our CMO, Dr. Lee, we do not really know a lot about Omicron. The World Health Organization has now acknowledged that it is a variant of concern in just one short week. The Honorable Sabrina Turner says at this point, little is known about the variant and more scientific evidence is needed to, quote, help guide our next steps. The experts tell us that the natural evolution of viruses is to become more infectious but less deadly. That ensures a virus's survival. What we do know is that our best defense at keeping these viruses at bay and better managed is the vaccination of as many people as we can, coupled with the boosting the vaccination strength in eligible persons. The health minister says the number of people in the hospital are, quote, overwhelmingly unvaccinated. She again asked that those in the community who are not vaccinated to consider getting the jab. You can find the complete vaccination schedule under community events at radiokman.gov.ky. With the reopening of the borders comes a renewed focus on transportation. Now that the border is open and residents and visitors are making good use of the Wynne Roberts International Airport, it is time to turn our attention to the General Aviation Terminal, which handles private and chartered aircraft. Speaking in Parliament, Premier the Honourable Wayne Panton told members of Parliament a newer, more modern facility is envisioned to enhance the traveller experience and bring the Cayman Islands more in line with similar facilities worldwide. The Cayman Islands Airport Authority is working on a business case, which will evaluate the benefits, anticipated costs, and work out the most suitable procurement model. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of the Ministry of Transport is cognizant that traffic congestion is a serious problem that is negatively impacting our quality of life, particularly for commuters traveling from the eastern districts. Mr. Panton announced that the government will undertake legislative reforms to strengthen and amend laws pertaining to public transportation and will collect data to underpin future decision-making. Plans are to identify options for a national transport system to help alleviate traffic and bring relief to consumers. And Mr. Speaker, the PAC government is committed to using technology and greener solutions in addressing our public transport system. Mr. Panton added that any decisions will be made with sustainability in mind. Cayman Eyes, the tourism workforce. That's one of the main goals of the new tourism minister. Details from Radio Cayman's Carsley Fuller. In his first budget address as a minister, the Honorable Kenneth Bryan outlined the many strategic goals for his ministry, which is tourism and transport in the next year and beyond. One of which was the shift of reliance on foreign workers to locally grown staffers within the sector. Reopening the borders should bring back jobs that were sacrificed at the start of the pandemic. The way I see it, those who wish to return to their former employment should seamlessly be reabsorbed. As long as the company is still trading in the Cayman Islands, they should have no reason not to rehire past employees. Mr. Bryan says the PAC-led government plans to expand the current national tourism education strategy and promote greater Caymanian ownership of tourism-related businesses. A wide range of training opportunities and courses designed for hospitality sector, such as customer service, excellence, and COVID-19 environment, and driver and a driver for excellence training have been afforded through the Department of Tourism to address some of the industry's current needs. Just this year, more than 50 training sessions have been held with more than 700 participants. In the upcoming financial year, the budget for tourism training of Caymanians is jumping to $887,000. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented us with a timely opportunity to change the way we've been doing things. And that includes the way we manage the hiring process with respect to Caymanians. I believe the time has come to correct the imbalance within our tourism workforce, which is predominantly staffed by expatriate workers. Minister Bryan is encouraging all Caymanians to register with Workforce Opportunities Residency Cayman to improve their chances of getting a job in the tourism sector. He says he's also working with the private sector to encourage more local hirings. If we find for some reason or another that they are not being absorbed back into the workforce or excuses are being made to justify work permits for jobs that we know Caymanians are available and qualified for, 
then stringent measures will have to be looked at. And while the cruise industry remains stagnant, the minister did promise that displaced Caymanians from that sector will continue to receive a stipend until they are able to return to work. Reporting for Radio Cayman News, I'm Curse Lee Fuller. During his address, the minister outlined the key strategic ownership goals for the Ministry of Tourism and Transport in the next two financial years, including working with the ministry's departments and agencies to use data to ensure a sustainable approach to developing necessary legislative and policy framework, improving ports of entry to enhance visitor experience, diversifying the tourism product with a greater ecotourism focus, creating and executing a national beautification plan, and implementing financial reporting and monitoring systems to assist the organization in providing, quote, greater value for money. The Cayman Islands Fire Service is still on site at the Georgetown landfill, damping down areas of concern. Fire officers reported smoke coming from multiple spots in an area about 100 yards in diameter when they arrived on the scene following a dispatch from 911 Public Safety Communications shortly after 4 p.m. Monday, but no flames were spotted. The Fire Service and Department of Environmental Health monitored the site overnight as a precautionary measure. The Health Services Authority aims to clear up any confusion on the number of isolation days required and exit testing date. If you are a COVID-19 positive individual, the day of your original test is considered day zero. Fully vaccinated individuals are required to isolate for 10 days, with exit PCR tests to be administered on day 11. Individuals not fully vaccinated are required to isolate for 14 days, with exit PCR tests to be administered on day 15. Public Health will contact the day before exit testing. For those vaccinated, testing is on the 11th day, and for those unvaccinated, it is on the 15th day. Registration for first-time participants in the National Community Enhancement Project is tomorrow. So in East End, it's at the East End Civic Center, Northside, Northside Civic Center in Bodden Town at Webster Memorial United Church, at Savannah Baptist Church Hall, Pedro, and Georgetown is the Georgetown Public Library, and in West Bay Church of Christ, Badabano Road. Ministry of Planning Acting Chief Officer Leda Nicholson Makasari tells Radio Cayman the annual beautification program is available to any unemployed Caymanian over the age of 18 and unemployed spouses with the right to work. The program, designed to help provide work and money for those less fortunate in the lead up to holidays, can be used as a way to beef up your resume. Everybody that participates in the program, they get an evaluation at the end of the program. And we have seen that when people are, you know, building their resume, their CV, they actually include that letter showing their grading. We have a number of three or so at Public Works that actually got full-time employment because of their dedication, and we saw that during the program. For more information, email ncep at gov.ky or send via WhatsApp to 917-0153. The Cayman Islands Civil Service Association Cooperative Credit Union holds its 46th annual general meeting, approving a dividend of 2.1 percent to all members of record as of the 31st of July 2021. The board of directors also approved an interest rebate to all members who made their loan payments on time during the 12-month period ending July 31st. Each eligible member will receive a rebate of 2 percent of all interest paid for the financial year. And that was your 6 o'clock news. For Radio K-Man, I'm Felicia Rankin-Solins. Good evening. With a look at Radio K-Man's local sports, I'm Dion Anglin. Cayman Islands swimming is making huge waves in Cali, Colombia. The Olympic Committee chef de mission, Janet Sersing, speaks with the Crook siblings after a fantastic showing at the inaugural event. We have Jillian and Jordan here with us. And Jillian Jordan, how was the event for you now that you've completed competing? This Panam Games was really fun. I'm glad I got to see new faces and all faces from different teams. And this was a good experience for the kids from Team Cayman as well. It was a really cool experience being here at Columbia. It was fun to get up and race long course again after taking a break from that for a while and hope to be back for the next one. How do you feel about your performance at this game? I'm pretty glad overall with my performance. It's been a while since I got to race in a long course meter pool due to high school season, so it was a good opportunity. So really, I hadn't really raced long course for a while, so this was kind of a learning experience for me. I just want to get better and grow and, you know, work on long course swimming. Thank you, guys. Jade Pickern, Emma Turnbull, and Callie McLean speak with the media after their draw with Team Mexico. So how is the uh, team event going for you so far, Jade? 
two events going pretty well. We lost out to Mexico yesterday and just lost in a tight 2-1 to Guatemala. Looking forward to the next match tonight. I believe that's against El Salvador. And how do you feel the overall tournament is going for you? Uh, it's going pretty well. Um, it's good to see old faces from past tournaments. Everyone's friendly. The venues are nice. And just looking forward to the last few days in Colombia. How is the uh, tournament going for you so far, Emma? I think it's going well. Like Jade said, we lost out to Mexico yesterday, but there were some good matches. Um, I think there were some good performances by us, but they were a strong team. And then today, Guatemala, again, there were some good performances. And it was very close, but unfortunately, we, we did lose. But I'm looking forward to tonight's match against El Salvador. How is the team event going for you so far, Cali? Uh, it's going okay. We had a tough loss against Guatemala earlier, but um, it's okay. We're doing our best. We're trying as hard as we can, and I'm excited to see the girls play again tonight. What about your experience with this tournament so far, coming from Canada? The courts are a lot warmer. We're getting used to them, but yeah, we're trying. Carifta gold medalist Lacey Barnes for athletics is set to start competition tonight. Lacey will be first up. She'll be doing the discus. Also, she is, she is in the final, so it's a straight final. Shalisa will compete on Thursday in the 200 meters, and that is also a straight final. The girls trained yesterday. They did everything that their coach told them to do. Everybody is in good health, feeling well, relaxed, sleep well, eating well. So we are about to go to the competition now. She competes at 7.25 tonight. Artistic swimming and cycling begin competing this week as well. Cayman Rugby secured a test match against Mexico in Mexico City next month. Head coach Jovan Balls says the last time Cayman faced Mexico was at the Rugby Americas Challenge competition held in Colombia. It's been a long time. The last time we played was in 2019 where we had lost 19 players. Um, our top tier players and we had lost them either to personal reasons uh, business requirements or injury and um, you know playing against Mexico in 2019 and losing to them by quite a big margin it tasted very very sour and this opportunity has come about and I think you know for us to now regain possibly 18 new players who will then be capped you know re gives us a, a, a massive resurgence in, in our depth of squad and uh, allows us to, to look at uh, a far greater number in depth than just trying to find the requirements in order to play a rugby game. Coach Ball says it's been nearly two and a half years since a Cayman national rugby team took to the field and it's time to start a new chapter. Out of the squad of 23, we have, you know, if it all works out and we don't have any COVID restrictions with regards to testing positive, we follow protocol, you know, we could possibly see ourselves capping 18 players out of the 23 which is a massive amount. 14 of those players are residency uh, cappings and four of the players are Comanian based players. So yeah, pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, overall, just a massive injection of newbies coming into the team, as you said, as you said it. And we look forward to resetting ourselves for 2022 and beyond. You know, this game will be a good gauge to see where we are now with the new caliber of players. And it'll put us in good uh, preparation for 2022, getting ready for the new RAN championships, which will happen traditionally between May and July. The tournament is this December 11th in Mexico. And Cayman Marathon is on this weekend. Core Race Director Rhonda Kelly of Kelly Holding Events and Communications tells Radio Cayman Sports the 2021 Walkers Cayman Islands Marathon will have several adjustments and new protocols in place to adhere to the current public health regulations and ensure participants are safe. We're so looking forward to having the opportunity to host another marathon this weekend, the Walkers Cayman Islands Marathon on Sunday, the 5th of December. We are looking forward to a wonderful morning where we will make Make sure that all public health regulations are adhered to to keep everybody as safe as possible. Organizers confirm 65 full marathoners, 595 half marathon entrants, and 69 teams entered for the relay this year. Registration for the 2021 Walkers Cayman Islands Marathon, Half Marathon, Four Person Relay, and Milo Kids Fun Run is open online at CaymanIslandsMarathon.com until midnight on Wednesday, December 1st. That'll do it for Radio Cayman's local sports for this evening. I'm Dion Anglin.